to Justice. I'm Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. And thanks for making Justice number one again last week. A big lineup tonight. Congressman Ron DeSantis, Jason Chaffetz, Corey Lewandowski, and Mike Huckabee all on deck to break down the latest on Mueller's investigation. The Uranium One scandal and the Russian dossier and who paid for it. But first, my opening statement. It's time, folks. It's time to shut it down, turn the tables, and lock her up. That's what I said. I actually said it. Lock her up. The House of Cards, upon which the Obamas and the Clintons built the Trump-Russia connection, collapsed yesterday when it was disclosed that the Clinton campaign and the DNC paid $12 million for a dossier to connect Donald Trump to Russia. To circumvent federal election laws, the campaign paid a law firm who then paid a research firm who then paid a former British spy to get dirt on Donald Trump from Kremlin-connected Russians. So why is this important? Now, the FBI had previously worked with this Christopher Steele, who was a British spy, and under director James Comey, they paid him an additional $50,000 to continue with the research. Now, this dossier was used not only to smear the president. It was used to create a special counsel. It was the basis for congressional hearings, the reason for wall-to-wall -wall anti president Trump coverage. But in addition to that, the dossier was used as a predicate for further investigation, wiretaps, unmasking, and FISA warrants. And if it was, then whatever was developed as a result is classic fruit of the poisonous tree, illegal and unusable. Folks, this has been a charade, a wag the dog, where you make up a crime, you accuse the other side of the crime, you call in your friends to prosecute the crime, as your friends collect the cash involved in the very deal making that is the essence of the crime itself. The last week, I told you, in 2010, the Obama administration approved the sale of one-fifth of our uranium to Russia. As early as 2009, the FBI and the Department of Justice were investigating Russian extortion and bribery efforts to access our uranium. And yet the Obama administration, through its Committee for Foreign Investment, CFIUS, approves the sale. On that committee, Hillary Clinton whose husband got a half a million dollars. Hillary Clinton, whose foundation got $150 million. Eric Holder, whose Justice Department quietly disposed of that international racketeering case that was the genesis to access the uranium. Along with seven other Obama appointees, virtually every one of them had connections to the Clinton Foundation. And when the Republican congressman questioned why would the United States be selling uranium or approving the sale that is used to create nuclear weapons to our enemy, the Republican congressmen were shut down, basically saying, don't worry about it. Starting Monday, this has to happen. Special counsel and former FBI director Robert Mueller must be fired immediately. His role as head of the FBI during the uranium deal and the Russian extortion case, his friendship with Jim Comey, demand his firing. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein must be fired immediately. His appointment of his pal, Bob Mueller, who he knew was head of the FBI at the time of the uranium deal, as well as the underlying case itself, must go while he, Rod Rosenstein, oversaw the prosecution of the underlying extortion case. And Rosenstein's sanctimonious recommendation that Jeff Sessions recuse himself are grounds enough for him to go. The special counsel's office must be shut down. 
This is nothing more than a cabal of individuals relying on false evidence to impeach Donald Trump. If there are any charges voted by a grand jury, which we hear there are, that will be disclosed on Monday, the Department of Justice can take over. Jeff Sessions must appoint someone to investigate the uranium deal. The sale of uranium to Russia, who was assisting at that time Iran in Iran's nuclear development, has put our national security in jeopardy. A 2010 case. This is long before Donald Trump ever got into the presidential race. And if he doesn't do it, it's time for Sessions to go. I've heard enough of this. I'm not going after the emails. I'm not going after Lois Lerner. I'm not going after Loretta Lynch. And I don't care how many of his swamp pals walk out. Enough of this one hand washes the other establishment nonsense. And Jim Comey, he needs to be the target of a federal criminal investigation for his role in the Hillary Clinton email scandal, writing an exoneration before witnesses were questioned, stepping out of his lane to announce a decision over which he had absolutely no jurisdiction. How much classified information was on his laptop that he leaked to his sources to then leak to the New York Times? and Debbie Wasserman Schultz for lying to Congress about not knowing about the money from the DNC for the Trump dossier. Why did she keep a Pakistani and his family with limited IT experience dressed down a Capitol Police chief for questioning that now defendant charged with bank fraud and conspiracy and moving monies out of this country and for interrupting the democratic process in a presidential election race, steering the nomination from Bernie Sanders to her girlfriend, Hillary? And John Podesta for lying to Congress. Andrew McCabe, deputy director of the FBI, must go. His wife, a congressional candidate running with Hillary in 2016, receives $765,000, which unused money's left over from the campaign she's allowed to pocket, which she got from Terrence McAuliffe, one of five directors of the Clinton Foundation. You see in a pattern here, folks? Is this how the dossier that the Clintons paid for got to the FBI that they then continued to pay for? And finally, everyone on CFIUS who's connected to that Clinton Foundation and voted to approve the sale of our uranium to Russia, they need to be put under oath. What monies did they receive in return for their activities with the foundation? For the better part of the last year, this nation has been fractured as Clinton, Obama, the Democrats, sanctimonious Adam Schiff, arrogantly and indignantly accusing Donald Trump and his family of colluding with the Russians the whole time. They were the ones lying. They were the ones making it up. They were the ones cutting the deals and collecting the cash. They knew it was a lie. They wrote the lie, they bought the lie, and they paid for the lie. And we're the fools that followed them down the path. This isn't about one defendant, one criminal, or one president. This is about our democracy. It's about law and order. It's about the republic. And it's time for the Republicans to step up to the plate, to man up and do their job or get the hell out. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page, Twitter, and on Instagram. Hashtag Judge Janine. Joining me now with reaction to my opening statement and all of these developing stories is Congressman Ron DeSantis. All right, Congressman, what say you? Well, Gene, uh, Judge, you're uh, ready to drain that swamp. I'll tell you what, that's, uh, that was a pretty uh, strong opening statement. Well, look, you're right on a number of those things. This dossier uh, that was paid for by the Democratic Party, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the DNC, the Clintons, uh, if that was used as the basis of this surveillance by Jim Comey and the FBI, that means all this puff about Russia collusion that happened over these many months all goes 
goes back to that unverified, essentially, piece of garbage. Um, and so all of this stuff, I think, is called into question. You would never have had all these committees investigating this to begin with, and you certainly would not have had a special counsel appointed. You know, Congressman, you have been out there, and, and I have to give you credit. I mean, you know, last week you said, you know, you came out, uh, I don't know, as oversight uh, and reform or House Judiciary, I'm not sure, and you said, we're investigating the uranium deal. You didn't even wait for the uh, for the chair of the committee, uh, uh, Trey or whoever the other one is, Goodlatte, and you said, we're going for it. Why are they dragging their feet? Why are they not demanding that Mueller pull back? What are they afraid of? Well, I hope that this last week is uh, an inflection point for Republicans in Congress, because when this existence of this informant uh, who was working for the FBI about the Uranium One deal was exposed, we had to investigate. And then you also had an investigation launched into the Comey memos and how Comey conducted himself during this period of time. And then, of course, Devin Nunes doing a good job investigating the Fusion GPS uh, dossier issue. Issue. And what's happened is the American people have responded to this judge. Oh, yeah. People are telling me that I don't even know. They see me on the street. Thank you for doing this. Oh, yeah. It's about time. Well, you so know what? this is the path forward. We've got to continue to do this, not let up, get all the facts, because if we want to drain the okay. swamp, now is our time okay. to do it. I want to give you credit. You wrote a letter to Jeff Sessions and Rod Rosenstein, and I'm furious with, with Rosenstein. I mean, this guy appoints Mueller when he knows that Mueller was on the uh, Uranium One deal. He knows Mueller's friends with Comey. Rosenstein was on the Uranium One prosecution, the underlying case, and they're dancing to, with the devil right now. But you write a letter to both of them and say, hey, we want all this other stuff being investigated. July 27, 2017. I have a letter here. They ever answer you? No, in fact, um, we did, uh, Jim Jordan and myself and a number of other members, we did go meet with people at the Justice Department, including the Attorney General, just reiterating that these issues what need is resolution. What is their reason? And I don't mean, Ron, I don't have a lot of time. What do they tell you? They don't say they won't do it, but they just say, look, we don't talk about investigations. And so that's why it's frustrating because people look and say, well, why is any of this stuff happening? Um, I think, especially with the Clinton stuff, given that there was criminal activity underlying this deal, I think it's totally legitimate what to have a council look at that. Okay, can, what can you do? So I can tell my viewers in the next few weeks it's happening. I mean, what can you do? Tell me, what can we do? Well, we are getting the documents from the confidential informant. Right. We are going to be bringing him in uh, for interviews. And eventually, I think he will testify publicly. But I think we're going to probably have to interview a bunch of other people in light of his information. And All so right. my hope is if they haven't done a special counsel by then, when we're unveiling some of this information, they'll have no choice but to do so. All right. We're going to uh, one of your uh, ex-colleagues, Jason Chaffetz. Thank you, uh, Congressman Ron DeSantis. All right. Uh, 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 we're also going to talk about Washington's worst here to break it all down. Former Utah Congressman Jason uh, Chaffetz, now a, a Fox contributor. All right, Jason. All right, Jason. Uh, I also have a letter here to uh, Jeff Sessions from you uh, referring to Brian Pagliano. You see, it all comes back, Congressman, to the same stuff. You guys have been pushing for months and for years to get to the bottom of it. And as they push back, Clinton and Pagliano and all the rest of them, they keep asserting the fifth. They keep they keep denying and they keep saying, you know, we don't have anything. Even the State Department today, 70,000 pages that have been uh, ordered by a federal judge, they won't even deliver it. What 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 can you tell us about what's being done now and what can you do? Yeah, it's been more than a year. The State Department is holding tens of thousands of documents on a case that they claim is closed. And when I met with Attorney General Sessions, much like Ron DeSantis did, I, I basically got a stiff arm. I got an Attorney General that said he would not comply. He wasn't going to do any sort of prosecutions. And, and it's it's such a huge difference. When he was a senator, he would have never put up with that. But the deep state is very real. They're pushing back. It needs to continue to be exposed. But we can't do the is basic oversight. Site, the demands that you this. see look look congressman 
I'm so happy you got oversight. And, you know, even though you're not a congressman anymore, Ron's got the oversight. You guys do not have a grand jury. You cannot impanel a grand jury. You cannot prosecute. Nope. You cannot put someone in jail. All right. So I'm happy what you're doing. It's great. Congratulations on what they're doing. What does a president have to do to get Sessions to do his job, to get rid of Rosenstein, who, uh, uh, who appointed uh, Mueller and all his crazy cabal? What do you tell the president? Just on the basic fact, are you conflicted or not? Do you have any conflict of interest based on bar rules, but also based on the rules? The president should ask, do you have any conflict of interest? And, and the, the uh, chief of staff can also do this. General Kelly can do this and say, do you have a conflict of interest? If there is a conflict of a case they're investigating, they need to step aside immediately. OK, so Mueller should say immediately he has a conflict. He never told, as far as we know, yeah. anyone that he was on that Uranium One underlying case. He never talked about his relationship with Comey. And we're not sure that he even told anyone on Cifius when all the uh, Clinton connected people and the Clinton Foundation connected people said, oh, it's OK to sell our uranium and let's not tell anyone about it. I mean, what do you think of that? I don't think there's any reason why Congress can't call up each of the uh, nine, uh, they were uh, cabinet level people. They can call up each of the nine people and ask them, why was it in the best interest of the United States of America to give 20% of our uranium reserves essentially to the Russians? And, and, and there's no reason why Congress did, but Congress doesn't have the guts to do it. That's, why? It's part of the reason I left, Janine, because I, the judge, because I got yeah, so yeah. frustrated with the fact that Congress will not stand up for itself, and our leadership does not think this is important. Do they all have so many skeletons? I mean, what is it? You know the American people are out of their minds right now. This is the kind of yeah. thing, no one has a problem if, if someone makes a mistake you punish them but it's one after another after another the cash the payoffs the pay to play the in your face try me try me i dare you this is outrageous the american people have had it Congress does not have the ability to enforce a right. subpoena. The only way to enforce a subpoena on the Department of Justice is to go to the Department of Justice. That has to change. There has to be a fundamental change so Should that Jeff Congress Sessions can get to go? the courts. Should it's Jeff the Sessions only thing. be out? Well, I don't know what the case is to keep him in this place right, if he's quick. not going to look at the obvious conflicts of interest. I think that is a legitimate question for him. Give him a week or so, uh, maybe 10 days, and say, have you or have you not looked at the conflicts of interest? If he has, then let's see the answer to that, because at least on the surface, these people are all conflicted and should not be prosecuting or investigating cases they were already involved with. Jason Chaffetz, thanks for your honesty. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks, Josh. All right. Mike Huckabee still on deck tonight, plus my exclusive interview with the chairman of the board of the Museum of the Bible. But next up, former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski. I'll bet he's got a lot to say. Stay right there. The mainstream media and the Dems continue to downplay new developments in both the Obama-era Uranium One deal and the Russian dossier story. Take a listen to this CNN legal analyst who identifies an interesting scapegoat for the origin of the Uranium story. This whole Uranium thing comes from Fox News. I mean, this is, this is a closed investigation that came up in Peter Schweitzer's book, uh, Clinton Cash, in 2015. It was discredited then. Former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski joins me now with a reaction. All right, did you hear that one, Corey? You know, Judge, I heard it, and what's amazing is this is why the other networks get no ratings, because it's <laughs> fake news, because they don't ever want to admit what the truth is. We all know what the truth is. The truth is that the Clinton cabal was involved in the uranium deal, 20% of our uranium. Bill Clinton was seen having, the emails now show it, Judge, 
right before the uranium deal was done, Bill Clinton was meeting with Vladimir Putin. No one talks about this. The other networks don't want to talk about it. But those are the facts. But not only that, I mean, he gets 500 grand for his speech, you know, the Kremlin connected uh, company. But you know what I love? He says in 2015, it was discredited. What is Jeffrey Tubin talking about? It wasn't discredited. The truth is the New York Times wrote about it and the uranium was not supposed to leave the country. And let's be perfectly clear, uranium is that essential ingredient to make a nuclear bomb. At the time, uh, Russia was assisting Iran in its nuclear development. I mean, is, is everybody stupid or do they think we're stupid? And maybe we are because we let them get away with it. Well, Judge, they clearly think we're stupid. It's something that the Clintons have perpetuated for decades now, that they think the American people are stupid. You know, they thought that that meeting on the tarmac between Bill Clinton and Loretta Lynch was about grandchildren and golf. Look, they continuously lie to us. We know the $500,000 that Bill Clinton got from that speech was probably some kind of payoff for the uranium deal. We know that Hillary Clinton had to sign off on it before it went to the CFIUS, uh, the American government, to sign off on the deal. Hillary Clinton had to sign off on it. What we know is time and time again, the Clintons have lied to the American people, and they're finally going to be held accountable for it. And did you know that uh, seven of the nine people on CFIUS are connected to the Clinton Foundation? I bet you didn't know that. And right now, we've got to put them under oath and find out exactly what the connection was. Were they paid by the foundation for anything? Were they informed by Eric Holder, who knew about that underlying case? But let me, let, let me talk about the fact that even Loretta Lynch, who was well aware of that witness who was gagged or the informant, she used her own uh, secret email under an assumed name. I think it was Elizabeth Carlisle. These people are so incredibly corrupt. It is stunning. And yet they proceed with a fake dossier destroying the president. What should the president do now? Should he make sure that Jeff Sessions starts his own special uh, counsel or his own investigation? Should should he get rid of Jeff Sessions? What should the president do? Well, I think first and foremost, I agree with what Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa said, which says Robert Mueller, who at the time was the head of the FBI when the Uranium One deal was put in place, should have to recuse himself from that and have nothing to do with that investigation. And there should be a separate and distinct investigation on that deal alone. As you move forward, I think the Justice Department has to look at all of the things that the Clintons did during their tenure and while uh, she was the Secretary of State, including but not limited to that meeting on the tarmac between Bill Clinton and Loretta. Lynch, because what we know, Judge, is that there's no way they talked about golf and grandchildren for 30 minutes, and all of a sudden, you know what one year ago today was? One year ago today was the day that Comey came out with the letter, a letter that we already knew he already had a conclusion to. Is one year ago today, Jim oh, yeah. Comey came out with the letter that yeah. a decision was already reached in his mind way before. Jim Comey should have an open and active investigation against him for all the fraud that he has perpetrated under this country and the number of lies that he has made under oath to Congress. And you know what's interesting all of the leaks and he admitted himself that he was responsible for at least one of them how much classified information was on his laptop and the information that he leaked to his friend to give to the new york times and finally corey i mean you understand that with this uranium one uh, jeff sessions doesn't have to appoint a special counsel he doesn't have to recuse himself because the deal was in uh, 2010 before or that corruption was before the um uh, 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 what, what am I trying to say before the uh, uh, Donald Trump got into the race? So Jeff well, Sessions that, that's had right, to Judge. look at Judge. it. Judge, here's the thing. The Justice, the Republican Justice Department should be going back and looking at every single shady deal that was done during Hillary Clinton's tenure as a Secretary of State. They have that obligation to the American people. Jeff Sessions should be looking at this. The Justice Department should be looking at this. And we should bring everybody to justice because that was the sham of all shams. And if they don't, Corey, quickly, because I have to go, what should happen? Look, I think there's accountability everywhere, and I think the president should push the Justice Department to open that investigation immediately. He has been, and they're not. What should he do? Quick. Look, it's, it's his job. Jeff, you do what the president asks you to do. That's part of the role of the attorney general. That's what you do. Corey Lewandowski, thank you. And Thanks, street Jeff. justice is still ahead. But Governor Mike Huckabee is next. Keep it here on Fox.
Welcome back to this very busy night of news on justice. My next guest says the Dems will rue the day they demanded a Russia investigation. Joining me now, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. All right, Governor, why do you think they're going to rue the day? Well, it's blowing up in their face. For all of a year, they have been demanding that we investigate the connection between Donald Trump and the Russians. And the Trump campaign, the president himself, everybody connected said there is no connection. And now we find out that if there is a connection, it's with the DNC, it's with the Hillary Clinton campaign, uh, it's the money that they spent to try to get this uh, dossier done. I mean, it, it really is coming back to haunt them. And uh, the uranium deal, which just stinks to high heaven. And, and, you know, Judge, one of the things that you hear is that, well, Hillary lost, so therefore we shouldn't be investigating. Oh, that's ridiculous. I want to make it very clear. It is ridiculous, and here's why. This isn't about whether you won or lost an election. It's whether you broke the law or not. Well, That's and, the issue. But you know what I think is also interesting, Governor, is that right after it broke that Hillary Clinton and the, the uh, DNC, the Clinton campaign, paid over $12 million for a fake dossier, the only thing fake about this whole Russia collusion thing, Mueller comes out and says, by the way, I got an indictment that we're going to unseal on Monday. He doesn't actually say it, but, you know, it's leaked out somehow, and on Monday, uh, apparently, there's going to be an arrest. We don't know who it's going to be, whether it's Manafort, someone low level, whether it's for lying, perjury. Uh, we don't quite know who it's going to be. Do you, I think it's kind of interesting that they're kind of like, oh, dear, this is dangerous. we got to make a left turn now. we got to let them know we're doing something serious. What's your take on Mueller kind of leaking or moving forward on, uh, you know, unsealing an indictment? on Monday. Well, I think the question begs to be answered. Who is it that's leaking this stuff? I mean, this is a serious issue. If you have a sealed indictment that is sitting there and it's not supposed to be released until it's announced publicly, how did the news media get it? Who leaked it to them? And, and if I were anyone in the Justice Department from just sessions on down, I'd want to know, in fact, I would demand to know who leaked it and let's put the cuffs on them before the indictment gets rolled out. Well, but if indeed they went to court to get an arrest warrant, which is done, I mean, when I, when I was judge, they would do that. they bring in a seal indictment, but also they'd have to come in to get the arrest warrant. So, but not like anyone is going to take off, like you need to get a, you know, a, an arrest warrant because they may take off. They would have taken off by now. But um, I think, I think the timing is more significant. I think that now that it looks like the whole thing is a charade, they're, they're kind of like running around. But I want to get into something else right now. You know, I've been talking about Washington's worst. And this guy, uh, and here comes the garbage truck. Uh, and I've been talking about IRS Commissioner John Koskinen that I said several weeks ago has to go. And just this week, it was confirmed that he is going, that the president said, you're out of here. So why uh, are people like him and Lois Lewis Lerner not being indicted, not being charged uh, by the uh, Department of Justice. What's your take on that? I, I don't know why. They need to be. If, if you or I had done what the IRS did, especially using the full power of the federal government to punish people for their political views, you know, I'd like to think that there are some honest-minded Democrats, honest-minded liberals, who would be as outraged over what the IRS did uh, than they would be if it happened to them, because it could happen to them. Yeah. This is a, a very serious issue. When the federal government uses all of its unlimited resources to destroy people, their businesses, their lives, their, uh, their, their bank accounts, then th that's criminal activity. And it's the worst kind of criminal activity Indeed. because we're Indeed. paying both sides of the crime. Yep. Both sides of the crime. All right. Governor we, we pay the taxes. Let me just finish that. We pay the taxes to fund these guys. And then we have to go and pay our own lawyers to defend ourselves All against right. them. Governor Mike Huckabee, thanks so much for being with us. And Museum of the Bible Chairman of the Board, Steve Green, my exclusive one on one interview is next. This week, I had the honor to sit down for an exclusive interview with the chairman of the board for the Museum of the Bible.
and Hobby Lobby president as well, Steve Green. He also took me for a special look inside one of the most magnificent places I've ever seen. You've got to see it. Now, you were one of the world's largest retailers, privately owned retailers, and one of the most successful businessmen in the country. And yet you've undertaken this mammoth project, 430,000 square feet, the Museum of the Bible here in Washington, D.C. There is nothing like it anywhere in the world. Why? I grew up in a home that had a love for God's Word. Um, I grew up in a Christian home. My parents took us to church and uh, raised our family according to the Bible. And in our business, uh, if you look at the first statement of purpose in our business, it says to operate our business according to biblical principles. And it has served us well. And I am blessed to be born in a country that our founders built from principles they found in this book. So I have been blessed personally by this book in multiple ways. and. We just want to encourage others to consider this book themselves. Uh, we want to inspire them to engage with it and consider the principles this book teaches for their own life. You know, they say that 90% of American homes have within them a, a Bible. And yet it seems that j this generation, unlike previous generations, has never been more distanced from the Bible. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I think you could argue we're probably more ignorant of this book than we have ever been as a nation. And I believe primarily because we don't teach it in our schools as we once did. It was regularly taught in our schools so people grew up knowing it. Uh, our founders, it was common, they would uh, speak from the Bible and they wouldn't have to give chapter and verse because everybody knew what they were talking about. Today, you make a quote from the Bible and many have no idea what you're talking about or where the source is. Even common phrases within our vernacular come from the Bible that uh, many people would have no idea that that's where it comes from. In this museum, you have created technology to tell this story. Technology, I understand, that didn't exist. You created it and patented it. Tell us about that. There, there is new technology. One uh, specific example is there is a digital docent. It's uh, a tablet, uh, smaller than maybe an iPad, a larger than an iPhone, where a, a visitor can uh, customize it, tell it how long they want to be in the museum, what their interest uh, is, and then it will direct them through the museum using in indoor guidance that knows where they're at within inches. This is some of the new technology that we have patented. Bronze doors downstairs, powerful, impactful, but more than that, how much do they weigh? 16 tons collectively. They're, you don't want them falling over on you. That's for how, how do you deliver 16 tons of doors? One piece at a time. <laughs> Museum of the Bible, the Capitol, Supreme Court, Library of Congress. It's amazing how much of our American history reflects quotes from the Bible. So, so this is the Museum of the Bible here, and you show we can show you how far we're just a few blocks from the United States Capitol. And so what is written in the United States Capitol well, there's a lot from of the things. Bible? What we do is some of the paintings right there in the rotunda, uh, yeah. the Mayflowers are coming over. There is a Bible that they're showing, a Geneva Bible that's uh, in the painting that we'll show. This is where we have scripture around us all day long. In many cases, we don't even know it. It's just phrases from our language that are, that are used. Here you have Victoria Beckham with a tattoo that literally quotes the Song of Solomon. You know, that, that the Bible is so relevant to so many people in so many ways that we don't even recognize. One of the things that uh, you have done that also speaks to how religion plays such an important part of your life is as that uh, not-for-profit business owner of Hobby Lobby, you took the Obama administration uh, to the United States Supreme Court. You fought for religious freedom. You funded the case. Where the Obama administration uh, 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 made a mandate that religion uh, be damned and you would have to pay uh, for abortifacts for any employee in your employ. And you felt that that was a violation of your religious freedom. Number one, why, how hard was it, and what did it feel like when you won? If life begins at conception, as our family believes, then to take part of uh, an abortive drug or process, we view that as taking life. 
And that is something that violates our religious beliefs. And there are many in this country. There are many that believe the same way that we do. That taking life is obviously, in our mind, wrong. And so for the government to come in and tell us that we had to freely provide to our employees products that could take life, that violated our conscience. And we felt like we had no option but to take the, the, and challenge the government on the mandate that they required us to take part of that. And so uh, we met as a family and uh, the, the decision was unanimous that we really felt like we had no option but to challenge the government that we love uh, on the mandate that they had uh, put on our, our business. And when you won? We won. It was, a, it was an exciting day. I think that there was, uh, for many of us, we somewhat felt like we would have a win, but there's no guarantee. We just, there's a, there a certain comfort that we had that we knew we were doing the right thing. And uh, we were uh, at Oxford, uh, my wife and I, the rest of the family was at the corporate office at our uh, offices in Oklahoma City, and uh, we were Skyping in, and it was just a, a, a thrilling day to know that uh, the foundational principle that this nation was built upon, our religious freedoms, were upheld. And uh, just the pride of our country uh, is, I remember, uh, some of the feelings that I had. This section is called Bible Now, showing how people are engaging with it right now. Another world map showing people that are opening up the app to engage with the Bible. So the skeptic comes in here thinking that nobody's reading this book anymore. No, there are people all over the world right now engaging with this book, and there is no book that can compare to that. And what do you say to American families about coming here? Well, uh, our purpose is we want to invite all people to engage with this book. So this is a museum for all people. This book has spoken into people from all different walks of life and has impacted uh, lives from uh, all different walks. And so uh, this is a place for people to come in and learn. Well, Stephen Green, uh, you know, on behalf of so many of us, you and uh, Mrs. Green, your wife Jackie, have done an unbelievable job here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And tonight's Street Justice will have you literally seeing double. That's next. Time for a little street justice. And this one had everyone seeing double after reports of a Melania Trump body double. Take a look at this one. <laughs> All right, so here I am on the streets of Manhattan trying to find out what ordinary people think about the claim that there is a stunt double standing in for Melania Trump next to the president. You're not going to believe the stuff that we heard on the streets today. The latest from the left is that there is a stunt double standing in for Melania Trump. Do you buy it? No. The new conspiracy theory is that we don't know where Melania is and that that's her stunt double. Has the left lost its mind? They say that she's no longer around. Do you believe that? I think she's around. She's a smart woman. She won't go anywhere. Is she gone? I think so. Where is she? Did the aliens take her? Absolutely. Well, where did she go? Got me. Well, what did the president do with her? Stop it! Okay. So, the left is saying that there is a body double for Melania Trump, that she's not standing with the president. You what? buy that? What? Are the left crazy? Of course. The left is always crazy. Get you shine these? No? Be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. <laughs> so, they say there's a body double for Melania Trump. Do you believe that? You know? If it is, then God bless them all. Do you believe it? I don't think so. No? Is this the real Melania Trump? Stop kissing me. <laughs> all right, so they say there's a body double for Melania Trump. Do you believe that? No. Have they lost their minds? They lost their minds. I, 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 love, I love you, by the way. I love your show. Oh, thank you. They're not going to play that. I appreciate it, though. Why would they even think like that? Are they going to say that next there's a body double for the president? Probably. Well, maybe there isn't a real White House either. I know, Robert. Yeah, maybe. Are we here? I don't even know where we are. <laughs> saying that Melania she's not a real person. She's not a person? She's a robot. But she's and there's nothing behind those eyes. Nothing? What's behind just, your Just eyes? computer chips. Yeah, what's in your head? Same thing. Same um, thing? They also sent me. Yeah, they sent Also you. a robot. Yeah, yeah, well, how do I get rid of you? Uh. <laughs> so where's the first lady? Oh, um, Michelle left. Michelle left? Yeah, that's oh, not a real first lady. That's a real first lady. But where's, where's Melania? 
I don't know. It's probably in Trump Tower somewhere. Hey, He's a fake, yeah. That's a, that's a fake? He's not there, yeah. Yeah, that's a fake? Yeah. So how do you know? I don't think that this is the same person. No? No. Where are you from? Italy. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, a little bit of photoshopping and... Uh, no, it's not photoshopping. The woman is gorgeous. I, I agree that she's gorgeous. Yeah, but uh, the, there's a different length of nose size than it. What are, you, what, what are you, a rhinoplasty doctor? Look at the nose sizes. I, I like your glasses. Bye, <laughs> we're friends. Bye. We're friends. <laughs> Bye. Boy, we'll be right back. <laughs> Friend me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Judge underscore Janine. You never have to miss justice if you can't watch. Just set your DVR. Do it. Thanks so much for watching. Greg Gutfeld is next. See you next Saturday night.